Hi everyone, this is Diana, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Swing class of Java to draw on a Java application, and how to also use JPanels, JFrames, and JButtons to add functionality to your application. So I'm here in Eclipse, and it's a really common IDE used for Java development. Uh, you might notice that it's black. I have a black background, and it's kind of one of the newer functionalities that you can change the background, but you know, don't be scared. It's the same Eclipse as it always is, just a different color. So I have this open up and I'm going to make a new Java project. I'm going to call it tutorial. And then I'm going to make a new class in the source folder. And this will be the main class that we run our application from. So it's going to need the main method. So we'll do public static void main you know the good old main method always looks the same every Java, app, Java application needs a main method so we have our main method here what we're going to do first is create a JFrame which to kind of put an analogy for you the JFrame is like when you build a house it's kind of like digging the hole that the house is going to sit on it's kind of like the container for the application and what everything is going to go into it so um, we're going to create a new uh, JFrame so JFrame, I'll just call it frame, and then as a parameter it takes a title for the JFrame, so I'm just going to call mine tutorial. And the cool thing about Eclipse is that if you mouse over any errors that you have, it gives you kind of uh, suggestions to fix them. So in this case we're just going to import the uh, Java Swing JFrame class. And what I'm going to do is actually import the entire Swing class because we're going to be using a lot of them. So I'll just do that, and star means all of the packages in that in that uh, superior package. So we have the entire Swing pack library here. So we have our JFrame, and what we're going to do is set a size for it. Um, the sizes are going to be all in pixels. So we'll do frame dot set preferred size, and it takes an argument as a dimension, and a dimension is a, another Java class that kind of just takes a width and a height. So we'll make a new dimension and then we'll pass in width and height. Okay so again we'll import the dimension class and just like I did with swing I'm going to import the entire AWT class because we're going to be using it and then we're going to declare the width and height variables they're going to be constants and the general rule about constants is that they're all in caps just by convention and then you need to be using the keyword final because final means that the variable cannot be changed. So we're going to do private static final int width. Our width is going to be 600 pixels. And our height is going to be 400. So we have these final constants that aren't going to change because the width and the height is something that's going to stay consistent. And then something else important is that we set a maximum and minimum size for the application so that it doesn't change sizes. So we're going to do frame.set minimum size. It's going to take the same dimension that we just made. And then we're going to also do a maximum size. So this will keep uh, the size of our application consistent. And then the last thing we're going to do to keep the size the same is to do frame dot set resizable to false, which means that a person can't drag the corners of the application, make it bigger or smaller. It's going to be the same size, which is um, pretty basic. We're going to need it for this tutorial. It's just uh, something easy that we're doing. So we don't need to make it bigger or smaller. So now we are going to make sure that when you X out of the application that it closes. So we're going to do frame dot set default close operation, and then it'll take um, an integer, which we're just going to use the JFrame constant of exit on close, which they have right there for you, which means that when you close it, the application is going to terminate. Okay. Then we're going to do frame dot set location relative to, and then we're going to set it relative to nothing. So Initially, it's going to be anchored in the top left corner of your screen, and if we set location relative to nothing, it's going to just going to be floating in the middle, which is actually a lot easier to see in this case. 
So we'll just say null. And then we are going to add a new instance of our second class, which we'll get to in a second. So we'll do frame.add because you know this is the this is kind of the pit that we dug for our house. And so we have to add things to it because we don't want just a pit, we want a whole house. So we're gonna add um, and I'm gonna call this next class that I'm gonna make in a second uh, display, and it's gonna contain all of the stuff that is gonna go into our JFrame. So you're gonna make a new instance of your class and add it to your JFrame, and we'll make that in a second. And then the last thing you're gonna do is set frame set visible to true, which means that people can see it, it shows up. So this is kind of the setup of our JFrame right here and it's in our main method so it gets done instantly and then when this is created that's when all the stuff is all the magic is going to happen and it's going to make all all the uh, components of our JFrame. So I'm going to make a new class call it display okay so first thing we're going to do is write the constructor for it so the constructor is going to consist of um, a public display And what we're going to do first is, uh, oh, I forgot to say, display is going to extend jpanel. And jpanel is different from jframe in the way that it's kind of like the foundation for the house. So you dig the hole that your house is going to sit in, that's your jframe, and then the panel is the foundation. And so you have um, all your components on your jpanel and then your jpanel on your jframe. And that's kind of confusing, but it'll make sense as we go along. So jpanel is going to be a uh, parent class of this display object. So everything that is in jpanel we're going to also have in our display class. So we're going to import this and then import the entire Spring library like it did in the other file. So now display is a child class of jpanel. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is set layout. And you know this is, set layout is a method of jpanel so we can use it. Which basically, if we're using null, means that all of the components on the jpanel are going to be, uh, they need to be explicitly stated where they're going to go instead of just naturally, automatically putting them in the middle or having some kind of layout that's already there. We're just going to say there's no layout, so everything that I put on there, I want to say exactly where it goes. So we'll, we'll see that in a second too. So set layout to null. Then we are going to do... Um, paint component, which is a really special part of the jpanel class. It is not called explicitly, it just comes with the jpanel and whenever the uh, the frame loads, it'll paint everything that we say here in the paint, uh, in the paint method. So we're going to do public void paint component and since jpanel is a subclass of jcomponent, we can use paint component. I prefer it. And then graphics G is something that um, you pass in. It's kind of an implicit object, and you don't have to actually create one. It just is implicitly passed in. So we're also going to import the graphics class, import the entire AWT class or package. OK, so now in our paint method, and like I said, this doesn't get called, but it, also, it gets executed automatically. So what we're going to do first is set our background color, set background to color dot black. So um, the color, it includes certain colors like, you know, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, all those colors. Um, you don't have to define a RGB value, which is pretty easy. Um, so then we're going to set our background, our color is going to be black, and then we're going to change colors because we're going to draw something and we want it to stand out if the color is black um, it's not going to show up because they're both black so we're going to do g dot set color to color dot white so that whatever we draw now will show up against our black background okay so i just noticed i forgot something and that is to call the super on paint component because uh, jpanel is a subclass of jcomponent 
and so it actually doesn't paint completely until you call the super class because that gets all of the children painted and it goes through all these different processes that um, will not actually paint your objects until the super method is called. So we're going to do super dot paint component and then pass in just our, our graphics object that we already have. So what we are doing is we are painting our super class, then we're going to set the background color to black, and then we're going to set the background color to, or set the writing color to white, and then we're going to draw a rectangle just to see what it looks like. Um, the graphics class has a lot of different things you can draw. You can do ovals, you can do rectangles, you can do strings and fonts, images, things like that. Um, so we're just going to do fill rect, and this is different than draw rect because um, fill rect means that you draw it and then you also fill it in with the same color, so it's, it's filled in. And if you did draw rect, it would just draw with, with the outline of the color that you're using. So it's going to first accept an x, a y, a width, and a height. And the interesting thing about these J-frames is that um, the Y actually starts in the top left instead of the bottom left. Um, in a normal XY coordinate plane, you start in the bottom left, that's your origin. The origin for a J-frame is at the top left. So as you go down on a J-frame, the Y is getting bigger. So we want to draw this in the top left corner of our application, so we're going to do 0, 0, so it's going to be a top left and we'll make it 100 pixels by 100 pixels, so it'll just be a square. So we expect to get a black background with a white square in the top left corner. Let's run it and see if that happens. And make sure you run it from the main class. So we'll save it. All right, so we got a black background and we got our white rectangle in the corner, so that's good. It's doing what we want. So let's do some dynamic stuff here. Um, let's say that we have, um, two variables called uh, private. int width, and these aren't final, these, these are going to change, these are just variables, they're not constants. And this is going to be the width and height of our rectangle. So we have those defined, and then why don't we set those to 100, just to start out with. Okay, and then so when our display object gets created, it's going to set our layout to null, it's going to set our width and height to 100, and then it's going to paint. So we can actually just call width and height here, and we should get the same exact result. Let's see if that's true. All right, yep, yeah, same thing, so good. So now let's go ahead and add a button, a J button to our J panel. And so a J button is going to go on top of our J panel, which goes in our J frame. So this is kind of like um, putting the house on top of your foundation, which is in the hole that you, did, you dug for your house. So um, we're going to declare a new J button. I'll call it button equals new. J button, and then it also takes a string to say what, what it's doing. So in this case, we're actually going to expand our rectangle whenever this button's clicked, so I'm going to name it expand. And then what we're going to do is um, add an action listener. So whenever this button is pressed, something's actually going to happen. Instead of just pressing it, it's, just, it's actually going to do something. So we're going to do button dot add action listener and an action listener listens for an action obviously um, so then we're going to create a new action listener and then our action listener has to contain the class um, action performed so it's waiting for an action to be performed and then when it's performed it'll do these things so in this case, our action is the button being pressed. So let's make sure that we have that method, public void action performed. And then it passes in an action event, and we'll just call it E. And we're not actually going to use the action event, but we might in the future. So make sure you have that. Let's import these classes. Oh, whoops. There we go. 
go. And good. Okay, so we have all of our packages that we need. And so now when our button is pushed, we want to do certain things. So what we're going to do is reset the width to 200, and then we'll do the height also to 200, so it's going to be getting bigger. And then once those are reset, we're going to call repaint. And so like I said, you don't actually call paint component directly, it does it automatically. But if you have something you want to update and you want to redraw your canvas or your, uh, your J-frame, you have to call repaint and that'll update it for you. So we have a button, we have it listening for a certain action which is to be pressed and then once it's pressed it'll perform these things. It'll change the width and height of our rectangle and it will redraw it so we can actually see the changes. And so one last thing we have to do before we run this is to actually add our button to our J panel because you remember we have to add our J panel to our J frame. So just like that, we have to add our J button to our J panel. So we're gonna do button or sorry, um, add because J panel, we're extending that class. So anything that we do without is a, is a method, a member method. So we'll add our button. And then like I said, since we set our layout to null, we have to explicitly state where this button is going to be located. So we'll do button dot set bounds. And it's going to take a X coordinate, Y coordinate, width and height of the button. So we'll start it at X 400, Y 100, and then we'll make it um, 120 wide and 30 tall. And these are all in pixels, like I said. So we will define where it's going to be, how big it's going to be, and then we'll add it to our J panel. And then our J panel is added to our J frame, so it'll all display on the J frame. So let's see if this works. Have a tutorial. Run. So we have our rectangle, and then we have our button here, and it says expand. And then when we click expand, it gets bigger, so that's great. So it does exactly what we want. And um, that's how action listeners are really good because it, it makes the buttons functional. If you don't have that action listener in there, this button will just be clicked and nothing will happen. So that's awesome. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you draw with, uh, with the swing class. And I can go into more depth in another video if you all want to do that. Um, but I thought it would be cool to see how the buttons and the J panels and the J frames all work together. So I um, hope you like this video and let me know what else you'd like to see. Thanks.